Greetings, the Hijabi Gamer here, and in this video, I'm going to go over what is the state of Destiny in 2024. Yes, Destiny 1, the first Destiny. What is its state in 2024? I'm making this video because, first off, people have often asked me, should they play Destiny? What is it like in Destiny in 2024? Are they adding new content? In addition, um, I often see people online who have much bigger channels than I do making a yearly video where they go over the state of Destiny in following year. And the problem is, while I am a regular player of Destiny, still making regular weekly Zer videos, and still live streaming original Destiny, they are not. They jump into Destiny one day, maybe play it for 24 hours, and then make a video for clickbait. So they don't really know the state of the game. They just know one day, and then they're gone. So I've often seen them make mistakes about the state of Destiny, say in 2023. Whereas, again, I've been playing this game, I still play it. So, who better than to provide you with, you know, what is the state of destiny than your friendly local Zer retailer? You know, I'm, I'm big, I'm Zer's big employee promoter kind of thing. Anyway, before I go into the state of the game though, I want to talk about buying the game. Because while it is a Destiny 2, which is ridiculously convoluted, seriously, I don't know how new people get into Destiny 2 at this point. Um, from my understanding, you still have to buy Forsaken, even though Forsaken, which is one of the best DLCs for Destiny 2, is not even available in the game. You cannot play Forsaken, but apparently you still need to buy it to unlock certain content. It's crazy. Certain editions do not include the dungeons, certain editions include the dungeons. It's ridiculously convoluted. Original Destiny, it's not nearly as convoluted. You just need to be aware of a few things when buying it physically. For example, let's talk Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. But you're probably wondering, is anybody still on a PS3 or an Xbox 360? You'd be surprised. Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 only go up to the Taken King. Rise of Iron, one of the really best DLCs in Destiny, though Taken King is definitely the best, um, are not available on Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. This also means it doesn't have the last year of Destiny, which is one of the best years of Destiny. In fact, I would say the last year of original Destiny is better than nearly everything in Destiny 2. In fact, one of the big reasons why people were so disappointed by the state of Destiny 2 at launch was because they, they left out so much from the last year of Destiny. So if you're on Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3 and you can upgrade, I would highly recommend it. Again, you'd be surprised. I get people commenting to my Zer videos. It happens rarely, but it does happen. Where they say, hey, I'm on PlayStation. Zer is not where you say he is. This is because they're on a PlayStation 3. And on a PlayStation 3, Zer is an entirely different location than PlayStation 4. He's also selling far less things than on the PS4. So if you can upgrade, I highly recommend it. And then go for the PS4 version. Now, as for buying the actual game. One of the really important things you need to keep in mind when you're buying a physical copy of Destiny is that there is only one disc version. Okay, now it could be for Xbox One or PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 3 or Xbox 360, but there's only one disc. And that is for the base game. Regardless of what the box says on the outside, you will get this disc. This is the only disc. So even if it says, for example, like this one here, they're selling Destiny the Collection, which includes all of the expansions. The disc on the inside is that same disc. It's the same disc as the one in the sale next to it. So the Destiny Standard Edition, that same disc is in Destiny the Collection. It is the same disc in The Taken King. This is because everything past the, ba the base game is digital content. If you buy, Destiny the Taken King, you will get the same disc, though the Xbox version, and a digital code for the Taken King. This is extremely important if you are buying a pre-owned copy, which if you look under this sale right over here, it says, 6 to 1 used and new offers. Those are probably all for the base disc. You need to either be absolutely sure that the person selling you Destiny the Taken King has not used the code, or you're buying a sealed copy. It's the same thing here. And honestly, this is not worth it because you're just getting the disc and the digital content. You might as well just buy the digital content 
online. $72.52 for what is basically, yeah, but you're getting the base disc and you're getting a digital code. This, again, so you have to make sure if you buy, look, again, 35 used and new offers. Make sure the code has not been used or buy it sealed. Okay? Listen, I found out this the hard way when I bought my PS4 and it came with a copy of the Taken King. And I opened the disc and I went, um, this is just destiny. It took me a while to realize that there was a digital code on the inside. I was still pretty new to, anyway. As for buying it digitally, as you can see, I am on my Xbox, but it is the same for PlayStation, all right? There's, a, they, there's one version to buy, okay? There's just basically one version. They make it seem like there's more than one, but they only sell you one. So right here it says choose edition, all right? This is no longer sold separately. This is the version you want. Destiny, the collection. Now, it's $60, which is a, I personally think it is a phenomenal deal at $60, but be aware that it often, very often goes on sale for like 20 bucks, which is a phenomenal deal. If you're getting this for 20 bucks, which is a phenomenal deal. I mean, Rise of Iron alone sold for $30 on launch. I know because I pre-ordered it. All right. You are getting, when you buy this, Destiny, The Dark Below, The House of Wolves, The Taken King, and Rise of Iron, and a level 40 character boost. So even at $60, that is a phenomenal deal. But at 20, I mean, I ended up buying it again for 20 bucks, so I don't have to keep switching the disc out. Because on Xbox, it just got very annoying. I had to keep switching the disc because I still keep playing Destiny. Highly recommend you just go this route, keep, wait for a sale, pick it up for 20 bucks, and then immediately after you pick up Destiny, look up my gamer tag. Um, I am Feline Uprising on Xbox and Feline Revolution on PlayStation. Keep in mind, there is no cross save. So for me, I play six different characters, three on Xbox, three on PlayStation. I have a level 400, a light 400 level 40 character on each. Anyway, what is the state of Destiny in 2024? And why should you play original Destiny when, as some people like to point out or remind me, um, Destiny 2 is available? Well, first off, one of the great things about Destiny is it's a complete game. And you're getting a lot of backup content for Destiny 2. There's a lot of lore in original Destiny. A lot of things are mentioned in Destiny 2 that originated in Destiny 1. For example, something pretty big is Oryx, Crota. You have raids that came from Destiny 1 that are just dropped unceremoniously in Destiny 2. And if you've never played Destiny 1, you have no idea where this is coming from. There's so much about the Vault of Glass. All of that, the, uh, the Black Garden, was originally in Destiny 1. It adds so much more context to all of that. In addition, there's some smaller things that you may not be aware of that originated in Destiny 1. That all of us Destiny 1 people are going, oh, I can't believe they mentioned that. For example, Alakul the Light Blade. It was originally in Destiny 1 as Alakul the Dark Blade. And he had his own strike. And he was pretty kick-ass in Destiny 1, I believe. No, it's not Shield Brothers. It's the Sunless Cell. This strike is awesome and it is Alakul the Dark Blade and you find out so much about how he tried to overthrow Oryx he, phenomenal highly recommend just for the, the the backup content to Destiny 2 it's worth it it's a full game all right they're not adding anything to Destiny because it's just it's complete there's multiple stories in it and some of them are like Rise, Rise of Iron is amazing the Taken King is brilliant. Rise of Iron, there are moments in Rise of Iron that just send chills down my back, down my spine, even years later. But one of the other great things about it is everything is still available once you complete the story. You can go back and replay everything. So for the backup content alone, Destiny is worth it. In addition, it's just, it's a good game. There's a lot, true, there's a lot of quality of life additions they made to Destiny 2. But Destiny 1 has its own unique play style, its own unique challenges. For example, one of the things about Destiny 1 that's very different than Destiny 2 is weapon setup. In Destiny 2, you can have a solar scout rifle. In Destiny 1, you cannot. So you have certain limitations that make it more challenging. For example, kinetic weapons are always 
they don't have, unless there's a few exceptions, do not have an elemental damage type. So if you want a scout rifle, you're going kinetic, regardless. Sniper rifles, fusion rifles, shotguns, and sidearms are all elemental damage types. Secondary. And then heavy weapons. You're not going to get... Like, you have swords, but you're not going to get a lot of the stuff in Destiny 2. So it has its unique challenges. Destiny is harder in some ways because of that. You have to unlock this. So this, when you first start playing, is completely locked. And as you play, it becomes more unlocked. So there's a unique playstyle to original Destiny that isn't in Destiny 2. And honestly, I like the challenge to it. Sometimes I think that one of the big problems with Destiny 2 is they have so unlocked the power level and so given you so much power that they they don't know how to make it like Destiny 1. There's certain things about Destiny 1 that are that if you were playing it as a Destiny 2, char Destiny 2 character would be a piece of cake, but because of the challenges and the limitations of Destiny, it makes it more challenging. Um, I feel like there's more content available to solo players because of that. Um, I personally solo Challenge of the Elders all of the time. I mean, there's really a lot of content in Destiny. The Archons Forge, Challenge of the Elders, the Court of Oryx, the strikes, I personally feel, are a lot better in Original Destiny. Some of the best strikes in the entire Destiny franchise, I think, are in Destiny 1. Like the Sunless Cell, um, the, the Taken King, the Shield Brothers strike. So, there are a lot of great strikes that they still haven't brought from Destiny 1 into Destiny 2 that are really, really good. I mean, the fact that they are taking a lot of the Destiny 1 raids and putting them into Destiny 2... On the other end, they seem not to be taking anything from Rise of Iron. A lot of people are saying they've retconned it, which is a big disappointment because one of the best strike, uh, one of the best raids in Destiny was Wrath of the Machine, which is from Rise of Iron. So there's a lot of great content. It's often available for only 20 bucks. You get to find out a lot of the lore from that backs up Destiny 2. Completely worth it. Now, what is missing in Destiny in 2024? Because there is some things that are really not available to you. In original destiny for example trials trials of osiris are no longer available in destiny because they are not updating the game so there's no trials there's no um iron banner and honestly crucible is pretty much no longer available it's not that it isn't available it's just it's very hard to get matched most people say it takes a long time to get a match together i haven't personally tried in a while so maybe it's gotten better um there are periods when destiny 2 goes down like the, down, the player base drops for Destiny 2. People jump back into Destiny and it's easier to get into Crucible. But really, Crucible really isn't available in Destiny 1. Um, on the other hand, Destiny 1 has private matches. And one of the great things about Destiny 1's private matches is you have Sparrow Racing League as a private match. So when you go into private match... It doesn't, you go under game options. And one of the important things to keep in mind is it doesn't look like it is an option, but it is. So it says here, you can see it's grayed out. The reason it's grayed out is because the default map placed is not a Sparrow Racing League map. So what you need to do is you need to pick Sparrow Racing, and then you're going to have to change the map to a Sparrow Racing League map. Then you'll get the rest of the options. So you can do whatever you want. And there, you're ready to go. So while a lot of Crucible isn't available, you do have the ability to do private matches and Sparrow Racing League. Um, you don't have updates, so you won't have seasonal events. You won't have um, the Dawning. You won't have, you know, Festival of the Lost. Basically, the game is in a state of, this is what the game is like, and that's it. Unfortunately, I wish, for example, that they would have Zur carry more of the exotics. They would be great at this point to just have them have Zerk carry adept weapons at this point you know it's been several years why not they have however put the trials weapons as possible rewards for doing um crucible bounties i as i said i really don't go into crucible but people have told me that if you do crucible bounties you have the possibility of getting trials weapons as rewards which is why i think that they should make adept weapons as a drop either when you get an exotic engram or available from Zer. now what is available in destiny First off, Zur continues to come every week. I make my videos every Friday morning, New York time, with whatever he's carrying. He keeps coming every week with different options. He's usually in the tower, sometimes he's in the reef. Zur arrives on Fridays 
at 5 a.m. New York time or Eastern Standard Time, and he's gone 48 hours later by Sunday, 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. In addition, you have the weekly reset. So weekly reset hits for Destiny on Tuesdays at 5 a.m. New York or Eastern Standard Time. What gets reset is, first of all, you get the weekly raid. So the weekly featured raid this week is King's Fall. I know this because Golgoroth Challenge, Oryx Challenge, War Priest Challenge. You get the weekly raid. You get, I haven't picked up my Elder Sigil, but I picked it up on PlayStation yesterday. Um, you get the El Challenge of the Elders changes every week with different modifiers, different bosses. Every week it changes. Um, so, for example, this week you have Berserk, Melee Kill Bonus, and Ironclad. You get the weekly Nightfall Strike. It changes every week with different modifiers. And damn, you have Daybreak this week. I should try running the uh, Nightfall solo. But Daybreak is awesome. If you don't know Daybreak, Daybreak is um, the darkness grows stronger and so do you. Form a fire team of three and unleash your light with greatly increased ability recharge. So basically nonstop supers. So weekly Nightfall every week. You still have that. Then you have the Siva Crisis Heroic Strikes. Again, same thing. Modifiers change every week. Rewards update every week. You're good on that. You have the weekly story playlist. Updates every week. I believe this week it's ta Taken King, like, Dark Heroes, which is, or Dark Challengers. Here it is. Um, the Taken War. So basically stories from the Taken King. And then you have um, Crucible. So Crucible updates every week for the weekly challenge as well. Every time, you'll notice you still have the same Treasure of Ages reward box. So you do those, you get Treasure of Ages boxes, which are great. They will drop silver dust, ornaments, and cosmetics. Um, so every week, all of those updates happen. In addition, um, you know what? People often wonder what is available in the Eververse store. Because when you compare Eververse, it's hilarious. You compare Eververse, excuse me, in Destiny 1 versus Destiny 2, You'd be surprised because people were pissed off by the state of Eververse in Destiny 1 and it is almost non-existent. So Eververse in Destiny 1 is basically um, those Treasure of Ages boxes which you can earn for free if you do the weekly challenges. Um, and I think there's one shader and that's about it. People were not happy because the Silver Dust, the only way you can get it basically is through these boxes. And so you can earn three of them every week and get silver dust, or you can buy more of them. And that, with the silver dust, you can buy... So here's Eververse, first off. I remember the controversy because I started playing um, in the last year. So you can buy Treasure of Ages boxes. You can earn three of them, or um, you can see what you get in them, right? You get cosmetics, silver dust, and ornaments. Okay. People were pissed because Silver Dust, the only way you could get it, you can't earn it playing the game. So if you like dismantle, if you get an ornament and dismantle it, you get Silver Dust, or you can earn them in box, in these boxes. And people are like, well, you have to, you can buy them. And it's like, well, you can earn three of them in game. And people were pissed, right? Because what you get there with Silver Dust then is you go over here to the Silver Dust store, and you can get everything. You can get ornaments, you can get these you know, special engrams, okay, you could get these boosters, you could get um, chroma, okay, you could get hordes for your sparrows and sparrows and shaders and people, can you, I, I know it sounds crazy to people, especially people who only play Destiny 2, people threw an absolute fit over Eververse when, Destiny, when they came out in Destiny 1. And now look at the state of Eververse. So that's basically the state of Eververse, you can earn these, I, I don't think I've ever bought any of these. I might have because sometimes I will spend five dollars um, around a seasonal event back when Destiny 1 still had them to kind of just give them a reward. You know, be like, hey, thanks for the free event. Um, they've opened up the tower as well. So this area is open. In addition, one other thing to keep in mind is, so the light level maximum is 400. And one big change they did, I think it was at the beginning of the last year of Destiny, I'm not sure was they made it so that faction packages, originally they only went up to 385 light, now they go up to 400. So whoever you get a, pa a faction package from, if you're high enough light level, right, you can basically use these 
to help grow your light level. So if you're at, that you will get drops for over 385. You won't if you're 385, you're not going to get a faction package with 400. But you get like 387, 389 and you can go up to 400 without having to do pinnacle event stuff using these faction packages. One of the factions I highly recommend people use is the gunsmith. A lot of people do not pay attention to the gunsmith because the gunsmith is very 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 easy to level up with. My rank with the gunsmith on Xbox is 58. My on Xbox on PlayStation it's 52. Why? Because you need 2,000 experience to level up with him. Every weapon you test with the gunsmith is 500. You need to test four weapons with him and you will level him up. You will get, when you level up with him, okay, four strange coins and a high level weapon, depending on your light level. For me, it's 400. So every time I level up the Bach, the faction with the gunsmith, I get a 400 light we level weapon. It's great. Even if I don't like the weapon, I can infuse it. These weapon tests are usually very easy. For example, you have here an auto rifle. Get a bunch of cabal kills, go on. Okay, auto rifle, precision kills. These things can be done in 15 minutes. You have this week five weapons you get. I will more than level up with this. It's great. Um, sometimes you get some crucible options. I don't recommend them. But the gunsmith, by the way, resets every Wednesday. So Wednesday morning, at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, all of this will switch out. So that is basically a rough run through on the state of Destiny. Um, there's a lot of story content. There's a lot of, you know, there's strikes. There's um, a lot of general content. One of the best um, open worlds in Destiny by far is the Dreadnow with all of its secrets. Um, there's secret chests, the secret court of the secret court of Oryx that you have to get to. Um, there's so much content in the Dreadnought. It is one of the best open world areas in Destiny. You get to see the original Destiny, you know, the world of Destiny. You get to be able to pick and play so many of the story content. I highly recommend playing it. Again, especially if you're lucky enough to get this game for 20 bucks. It is an absolute steal. Anyway, that's a basic rundown on the state of Destiny. As I said, nearly everything is still available in the game other than Crucible. So Trials, uh, Iron Banner, and Crucible, and you still have private matches. So if you want to go into Crucible, play Original Destiny. You have a bunch of people who want to play Original Destiny, Crucible, um, you can do a private match. As you can see, um, the Dreadnought is just one of the best locations in the game. You get to have Cade 6 being Cade 6, and he is brilliant. Some of the best lines in Destiny were said by Cade 6 in Destiny 1, for example, one of his signature lines is Eris, get your rock off my map. Or when he tries to get you, um, when he gives you Eris' ship and he's, and Amanda Holiday's like, it'll be ready for you. And he's like, what? I'm not going in that thing. And he, it's actually, he's sending us out there. Some of the best content in Destiny, all of Destiny is in Destiny 1 and Cade just being an absolute legend. I mean, the fact that they keep bringing back weapons from Destiny. I mean, right here, this, right here, is the Red Death, which they just brought into Destiny. And honestly, it feels like a beast in Destiny 1 versus Destiny 2. I've used it in Destiny 2. It does not feel as powerful as in Destiny 1. Um, you still have some of the best exotics in Destiny that you don't have in Destiny 2. For example, the Hunter's uh, Bones of Ao, which... Uh, gives us a triple dump, triple jump. One, two, three, four. So basically a triple jump, yeah. Yeah, we don't have that in Destiny, um, Destiny 2. Anyway, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. As I said, if you have any more questions about Destiny, let me know in the comments down below. Also, if you are playing Destiny, uh, look me up. I'm on PlayStation and Xbox. Feline Revolution on PlayStation, Feline Uprising on Xbox, and I do hope to see you in the tower.